Hello, I welcome you all to a discussion on the topic the rise of new religions. In this discussion, I will be throwing light on the varieties of new religion. The 1960s is considered to be a turning point for religion. It is since the 1960s that the earlier established traditional forms of religion have been declining and even if you look into those forms that have survived and still exist have only one done so by adapting to the modern changes in the beliefs and practices. We can also see that even civil religion exists only in a faint form. The residues of traditional social attachment were the basis on which it dealt in the early days and this also has been dying recently. As tradition fades, it becomes difficult to sustain traditional authority and its institutions. As a result of this, civil religion weakens. Parallel to this decline of traditional forms of religion and civil religion, we have noticed that there is a rise in new religions. The numbers of religious sects and cults have multiplied. Nonetheless, it is true that in modern times, people are less religiously involved. However, we cannot ignore the fact that new religions have become an important element in the lives of many people. Our discussion on religion would be incomplete if we do not comment on the issue of belonging and believing. Here we are talking about that belief we have in a particular religion and our participation in the rituals, functions and institutions of the same. Let me begin my explanation by commenting on Britain and America. We see that in Britain post war the church membership as well as the attendance has declined. However, if we see the case of America, we shall find that people are still involved in church activities more than Britain, but despite of this fact, the membership to the church has not been. Instead, we can see that there is a decline in America too. So, by taking both of the cases, we can assume that religious belonging is very low in modern times as compared to olden days. This clearly shows the decline in the sense of belonging. Now, we could say that nowadays people are less likely to belong to organized forms of religion and even seriously and actively take part in any such kind of activities, functions or rituals. Now, here comes an interesting part. Although we have noticed that religious belonging is decreasing, the sense of religious belief has not declined. People have not stopped believing or having faith in their religions. Well, even though the attendance to the religious institutions may be weak comparatively than before, 
Yet the sense of belief is apparently high and a lot of people still subscribe to these religious beliefs. However, we do not know the intensity in the adherence to these religious beliefs. It may even be loose. Also, we should not forget that these beliefs are not tied to particular doctrines or practices. People do agree that religious beliefs is real, but their importance is not that high. However, for minorities, the common religion is not enough. These minorities are attracted into active Protestant sects or new non-Christian forms of cult religion. Now let us look at some of the trends in religious behavior and nature of the common religion and then finally discuss on the variety of new religions. In 1978, a survey revealed that the over a third of English Catholics to be regular church attenders. The attendance of the church mostly comprises of older women and non-manual workers as compared to men and manual workers. It is also seen that among the regular church attenders, the women are high in number. The members of the Anglican denominations among Protestants were in a minority. The great majority of active Protestants are members of Presbyterian, Methodist or Baptist denominations. Britain has the lowest levels of church membership in Europe. Observable religious activity is still very high in the America. Over two-thirds of the people claim to be the members of the church and just over a half the population still attend church at least once a month. In 1990, the member of the British people belonging to a church saw a decline from 19% in 1970 to 12% in 1990. This was less than half the level that it had been at the turn of the century. About 40 million people in 1995 claimed to have some kind of religious allegiance. Over half of them claiming to be Anglican, not many of these nominal Anglicans were actively involved or attended church on a regular basis. It would seem that only about 1 in 20 of those who claim to Anglicans are actually members of the church. The Anglicans and the Catholics both lost large numbers of members between 1975 and 2000. The Protestant sects and denominations have held up slightly better than the Anglicans. Nevertheless, the Baptist, the Methodist and the Presbyterians each lost a quarter of their members between 1970 and 2000. Among Christian churches, only the Orthodox churches has shown an increase in members, mostly due to migration. In between 1885 to 1950, two-thirds of the newborn were baptized into the Church of England. But by 1960, it was only the half of it. By 2000, it was just a quarter. Less than 10 in 100 children were attending Sunday school. 
compared to 20 in 100 during 1895 to 1940. Several ceremonies replaced church marriages. According to Wilson from 1952-1962, one third of the English marriages were civil marriages compared to one quarter in 1929 and just one in eight in 1879. By 2000, well over a half of the marriages took place in a register office or in approved premises such as hotels and public halls. Well, we can see that these trends reflect then a decline in the sense of belonging as measured by conventional church going and involvement. However, this does not prove the decline in believing. As a matter of fact, religious beliefs appear to be quite strong. In the US, the religious belief is higher as 95 percent of the people believe in God. The religious beliefs of the people in US and Britain are not conventional Christianity even though they might describe themselves to being Christian. Well, it is seen that for many people Christian and non-Christian ideas have been put together into loosely held systems of beliefs. There is no priestly or biblical reference in these beliefs. When we talk about God, we always relate it to superstitions, astrology, psychic phenomena, ghost and paranormal experiences. Many people believe in horoscopes, fortune tellers and good luck. These beliefs were held alongside beliefs in alternative medicine, the power of crystals and reflexology. Well, we can say that in modern times, organized forms of religion that is both civil religion and conventional denominational religion is no longer a major factor of the lives of the people. The religious belief that one holds nowadays are not in an orthodox or conventional way. These beliefs are free and loose. They are hardly organized into any formal participation in churches or rituals. Mainstream religious belief is now no longer attached to regular attendance at the church of conventional Christianity. This belief can be regarded as what Devi calls common religion. According to Devi, common religion is a non-sectarian and eclectic form of religious belief. Devi also says that people continue to believe in God but are reluctant to express this belief in either church going or church membership. The God of common religion has little relation to the God of conventional Christianity. Common religion is a belief system that derives from both Christian and non-Christian sects. But there is one thing about common religion that we should not overlook. The common religion has not been able to put forward moral implications on how one should live as a member of the society. It does not provide morals and values that have always been central to traditional religions. Now let me explain to you the varieties of new religion. 
The common religion is not enough for many, neither does the general framework of moral individualism meet their need purely spiritual values. This result in some of them choosing more fundamental forms of traditional Christianity. The others have opted for new religions. Since the Second World War, the number of these new religions, both Christian and non-Christian, have increased. This growth has been taking rapidly since 1960. The new religions are most often described as cults, but the term has different meanings. So, what is a cult? In 1912, Twelfth defined cult as a loosely organized grouping without sharp boundaries and with no exclusive systems of belief. Cult beliefs are not rigid and exclusive, instead they are open and flexible. They comprise of a set of common ideas, themes and members and contribute their own views to these ideas. The cult is quite different from a sect because as mentioned before it is flexible, hence new recruitments and membership are open and there is no need for the member to completely abandon his or her own beliefs. Let me take an example. Many people adhere to cult beliefs in UFOs and alien abductions. These beliefs are diverse. There is no central organization or enforced set of beliefs. The tenure of the cults is short lived as they depend upon the personal leadership of a founder a key member and dissolve with the death of the leader. We can take spiritualism as an example of a long lasting cult that has done its adherence from the membership of many churches as well as those who do not belong to any churches. There are sometimes negative meanings given to cults. The term cult is also used in a derogatory sense. They are often accused of brainwashing or kidnapping those who join them. Also, they are accused of political, financial and sexual deviant behavior. Well, the actual sociological meaning of cult has been blurred by its modern use as a level for religious deviance. This is the reason why now a more neutral term is used in its place new religious movement. So, the four main forms of new religion are number one inspirational protestantism, number two world rejecting religions, number three world affirming religions and number four religions of ethnic protest. Let me begin with inspirational protestantism. This form of new religion is popular with immigrant groups. It comprises a number of fundamentalist, reformed and evangelical sects and denominations that have been split from established denominations or in opposition to them. The examples of inspirational Protestantism are the Pentecostals Church and the Southern Baptist Convention. People are attracted to inspirational Protestantism because of the increasingly liberal religious attitudes of mainstream Protestant denominations. There are two important principal forms of inspirational protestantism called fundamentalism and pentecostalism. 
let me throw some light on fundamentalism. The fundamentalist form is quite conservative. They have a conservative attitude towards religion. For them, the Bible is the direct word of the God. They regard the Bible to be the most important source of knowledge. Bible is nothing but the truth to them. They believe that it requires no interpretations and neither is it a myth. However, things are not this simple. One cannot understand any text without a bit of interpretation. Bible is a fact for them. They believe that if one simply and directly reads the Bible, one can easily understand God's will and the truth of human creation. Now, let us move to the Pentecostal form. The Pentecostal movement began in 1900 and spread soon to Britain. According to the Bible, we are to believe that the Holy Spirit descended on the disciples on the 50th day after the Passover festival when it gave gifts to the disciples. These gifts that the Holy Spirit gave were prophecy, healing and speaking in different languages. Pentecostal churches are of the view that these gifts are still available to believers who believe from their heart and soul. The services of these two believers are designed to create conditions for this. These services are loud, joyful singing, prayers and hymns. The Assemblies of God is the principal Pentecostal church in America. Now let us discuss world rejecting and world affirming religions. People's religious needs seem to be unsatisfied by what conventional forms of Christianity provide. What people need right now is a kind of religion that goes well with modern life. From the 1950s, there was a growth of affluence and consumerisms which generated two characteristic responses to the mainstream religious culture on the part of those who felt unable to achieve their goals through the conventional means available to them. The first one is retreatism. It rejects goals and means of the conventional society and a withdrawal from it. The other response is innovation that tends to seek out other alternative way of achieving these conventional goals. In 1984, Wallace argued that each of these responses was linked with the growth of a particular kind of religion. So, world rejecting religion corresponds to the retreatist response and world affirming religion corresponds to the innovative response. So, let us understand a little more on world rejecting religions. World rejecting utopian religions grew rapidly in 1960s, where the youth was attracted to the retreatist response, this form of religion has a clear concept of God and regards it as a source of moral norms and values. Their religious mission is sometimes accompanied by a search for political influence and social change. Some examples of world rejecting religions are the International Society for Krishna Consciousness known as ISKCON and Unification Church. Now 
let me say a few words on world affirming religions. These religions have a worldly character, they embrace the goals and values of modern society. They diffuse religious orientation with acceptance of magical and manipulative techniques that allow their members to achieve conventional goals unconventionally. Wallace is of the view that they use psychotherapeutic stance towards the solution of members problem and with a thin boundary between religion and psychology. Some examples of world affirming religions are transcendental meditation and Scientology. Transcendental meditation focuses on meditation for personal and the practical benefits. Scientology uses means that is similar to psychotherapy. However, despite the growth in the number of these religions, they together comprise only a very small proportion of the population. Now, we come to a third form of new religions. Since earlier times, religious beliefs have an important role to play when it comes to defining or developing ethnic identities. A certain ethnic community in many religions is seen as being special to God in some way. For example, Jews texts believe that Jews are the chosen one and Japanese beliefs trace their origin to Amaterasu, the sun goddess. Religion and ethnic identity are connected since earlier times, where each one has its own text, beliefs, gods, priests and practices. Migration led to the increase in religious diversity and resulted in the divisions in each religion. So, what is religion of ethnic protest? Growth in the number of these affiliated to ethnic minority. Multi-ethnicity and multi-religion may be an essential condition for religion of ethnic protest, but it is those religions that have grown within particular ethnic minority communities and are used by their members to voice their protest at their exclusion on their grounds of ethnicity from full participation in their society. The two examples of religions of ethnic protest are Rastafarianism and the nation of Islam both present in contemporary Britain. With the explanation of these new forms, we finally come to the end of our discussion on the rise of new religions. We may conclude that the sense of belonging might be low as nowadays people may or may not visit religious institutions regularly or follow rituals strictly, but the number of people believing is higher. The belief in religion has not faded even though the forms might have changed with time. People still believe in their religion or new forms of religion. With this, I conclude our discussion on the rise of new religions. I hope you have gained much information from this discussion. Thank you.